Hey, what's up guys? It's Thune, and today I'm going to talk to you about Healer Balance in patch 10.1, Aperus, the Shuttered Crucible Raid. Uh, so we're only going to be focusing on the raid here, uh, but to do that, we're going to be breaking down healers into four kind of different categories. Uh, so it's going to be their healing output, their damage output, their survivability, which would include things like uh, personal defensives as well as like external defensives. And then finally, utility, which kind of encompasses everything else, but that would be things like uh, movement, um, cooldowns, things like power infusion or blessing of summer, um, and then also like damage reduction cooldowns. Now, before we jump into that, it's important to note that the current balance in 10.0.7, I think, is largely going to carry over in the 10.1. Uh, but that's a great thing because this is probably the closest healer balance has ever been, and you will absolutely be able to clear the raid on any at any level on any spec. So if you are really comfortable or really enjoy playing uh, Mistweaver, this is absolutely your time to shine. So without further ado, let's jump into ranking the specs on their healing output. So in 10.0, Evoker and Rested Druid were anywhere from 20 to 30% ahead of the rest. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but Druids had a quite good set bonus compared to the rest of the specs, and also a very well put together talent tree. And Evokers, this is the first time we ever saw Evoker in the raid, but much like Mistweaver and Mist of Pandaria, or Death Knight and Wrath of the Lich King, this was their tier to shine. Uh, we had never seen it before, and they just kind of came out of the gates quite overpowered. Now, in 10.0.5 and 10.0.7, both uh, Evoker and Rester Druid have received multiple nerfs, but more importantly, all of the other healers have gotten either talent tree reworks, uh, numeric buffs, or both, uh, which has kind of brought them up to the level that Evoker and Rested Druid uh, were at. So that's kind of left us with this like really, really good balance that we have currently in 10.0.7. And I think that's largely going to carry over into 10.1. Uh, the primary reason for that is everyone is losing their 10.0 set bonuses and equipping the new 10.1 bonuses. And those are all like largely balanced uh, pretty closely. So no spec is going to be overperforming because they're equipping a much more overpowered tier set than some of the other specs, for example. It is important to note that we did have a 25% health and damage change, much like the 40% one we saw uh, right at the tail end of beta. Um, and we've only had one PTR test with that data. So, and this affects healers the most. Um, unfortunately, this does like positively affect Preservation Evoker a little bit uh, through things like Rewind and Golden Hour. Although Golden Hour is like much less of a part of their healing now that they won't be uh, pressing a version nearly as often on the entire raid. So if I had to rank each of the healers based on their healing output, I think Evoker does uh, come out a little bit in front, but it's not even close to what they were doing uh, compared to the rest of the specs in 10.0. So I think they do eke out a little bit, but um, that's largely because of just how powerful Rewind can be. And then every other healing spec, which would be Holy Priest, Resto Shaman, Holy Paladin, Disc Priest, Druid, and Mistweaver, I think are all in the same uh, tier. I think they're all really, really close together, and you could have really viable reasons to bring any of them uh, on your raid team. So let's look ahead to damage. So in the past, it's always been Disc Priest and Holy Paladin, uh, followed by like Mistweaver, because those three specs provide like really strong passive damage, because that's kind of how their specs work, is they do damage, and then that damage turns into healing in some form or another. Um, in 10.0, they added Nature's Vigil to Resto Druid, which kind of just turns their healing throughput into damage on a 1.5 minute cooldown. And they also gave Resto Shaman Acid Rain, which uh, while being really underpowered in 10.0 uh, has been massively buffed by like 120% in 10.0.5 and then tuned back down slightly in 10.0.7. Um, but those two buttons have gave uh, those like Resto Druid and Resto Shaman some much needed passive damage in a raid setting. And then the other uh, thing that's important to note here is in 10.0, Evokers had a very strong four-piece bonus that gave them a lot of passive damage. Uh, so essentially, they would spread Echo on the entire raid. They would press Reversion, so everyone has Reversion, 
and then each of those reversions has a chance to give them an instant cast, uh, free, more powerful living flame that they would use on the boss, and then those living flames would give them more essence bursts, and it was kind of like a feedback loop. The more living flames you were firing, the more essence bursts you got, so the more healing that you could then do. Um, they're losing that four-piece bonus, which is probably the biggest change from 10.0.7 to 10.1. So if I had to rank the healers based on their damage, um, Disc is definitely ahead in front. Um, they're still doing like really, really solid passive damage. And they also bring power infusion, which is an incredibly strong external like cooldown that they can use on DPS players. Um, so Disc is definitely first uh, and ahead the best. Followed by Disc, I think Holy Paladin and Holy Priest are probably in the same tier if you account for PI. Because um, I think PI is a stronger cooldown than Blessing of Summer is. So Holy Paladin does a little bit slight or a little bit better passive damage than Holy Priest, but Holy Priest also has the stronger external. Uh, so I think they're probably in the same tier. And then followed by them is Shaman, Mistweaver, and Druid. Mistweaver might be a little bit ahead, but uh, I think all three of the specs provide, you know, like, that should be the goal, is, like, if you're doing Shaman, Mistweaver, or Druid damage, that's, like, how much damage I think a, a healer should be able to provide. And then followed by that uh, is, unfortunately, I think, Evoker. I think they're the biggest uh, miss here going into 10.1. They're, not only does do they lose a bunch of damage, but it also feels really bad to actually try to add in damage, just because of the, the cast time of living flame um let's move on to survivability so a lot of this hasn't really changed since the introduction of like the talent trees uh and dragonflight and beta um so not much has changed here from 10.0 to 10.1 the i think the biggest change is probably earthen harmony for resto shaman now gives uh both the player both the player and also their target um six percent damage reduction so long as they have Earth Shield on them. Uh, so that was a new change going into 10.0.7 and um, give them some needed tankiness, I think, because they can't take many of the options on their class tree. So uh, ranking the specs on their survivability, Holy Paladin is definitely out in front. They have a powerful external with Blessing of Sacrifice. They have uh, a good personal defensive on a short cooldown. They have Bubble which is one of the best defensives in the game. And then also they have Blessing of Sacrifice, which is uh, proving to be decent in this raid because there's quite a few bleeds that you can remove. Uh, followed by Holy Paladin, I think Evoker is probably next. Um, again, they have a short CD external and time dilation. That's really good. They have two charges of Obsidian Scales, which is really good. Uh, they have Zephyr, which is an AOE damage reduction cooldown on five players. Um, so Boker just has buttons for almost everything they want. Um, the only thing they're really lacking it compared to Holy Paladin is a uh, bubble. So uh, followed by Evoker, I think Mistweaver and Rested Druid, both of these are like really tanky. They have multiple different defensives that they want. Uh, they both provide decent, but not super strong uh, externals in both Iron Bark and Life Cocoon. Um, obviously they're useful in different situations. Uh, but this is where I think like the the goal for you know healer tankiness sh should be. Uh, followed by Mistweaver and Druid is Shaman. Um, they really only have Astral Shift. It's a really good defensive, but it's on a 90 second cooldown. And then uh, in addition to that, they now also play Earthen Harmony, which gives them a 6% flat damage reduction. Uh, it's not the best thing in the world, but it's not nothing either. Uh, and then finally, bringing up the tail end is Priest. Um, I think Holy Priest is slightly better than Disc, but both of the Priest specs, I think, could use some much needed love in the defensive department. Uh, they do have decent externals, but they're on long cooldowns compared to every other spec. Uh, and their defensive is really just Desperate Prayer, which is a health increase. It's not even a damage reduction. So uh, Priest is definitely the, the loser here in the survivability department. And finally, let's move on to utility. So uh, in 10.0, we had one of the most unique fights for utility to kind of like showcase a healer. 
uh, and that was Razageth for Evoker. So you needed two Evokers on Razageth uh, for Time Spiral. And then also Rescue was pretty much needed for priests, paladins, and shamans to live uh, phase one. Um, and while there's not a fight exactly like Razageth, there are quite a few knockbacks in this upcoming raid, and those same tools I think are going to be really valuable. Um, as well as that, uh, they also have Cauterizing Flame, uh, and they can use that with Stasis to like kind of dispel three different bleeds at once on other players, uh, which could be useful in a couple of these fights, I think. Windrush Totem is still weaker than Stampeding Roar, so if you're kind of fighting between like, you know, which uh, movement speed that you need, you're still going to want to use Stampeding Roar every time over Windrush Totem, uh, unfortunately. Um, and in 10.0, there weren't really like the need for these like strong damage reductions. And in fact, it was actually quite hard to utilize uh, like Barrier and Spirit Link Totem because some of the fights uh, like Dathia, for example, you're way too spread out to like fit many players inside of a barrier. Uh, so it didn't really feel that great to use. Um, and that seems to be changing going to 10.1. All of the encounters seem to be like really stacked. So it's easy to get value out of Spirit Link and Power Word Barrier. Um, obviously Aura Mastery is still incredibly strong. Um, and then like I said earlier, Evokers still are going to be able to make use of their like uh, rescue and time spiral, I think, on some of the later fights with knockbacks. Priests still give power infusion, which is just incredibly powerful. Um, more than anything, if you're seeing multiple priests in a raid comp, it's probably not because of their damage contribution or like healing contribution, although that could be part of it. It's, it's probably because they have power infusion uh, and it's just necessary to meet some DPS checks, I think. And on that same token, uh, Holy Paladin also gives Blessing of Summer. So if I had to rank the healers based on their utility that they're bringing to the table uh, on a lot of these uh, encounters in Aperus, then I think Priest takes the cake despite having really poor uh, movement and stuff like that. Uh, they can still just get rescued by an Evoker like they did on Razageth. Um, and they still bring Power Infusion, Barrier, and Symbol of Hope are looking to be like really good on a lot of these fights and easy to get value out of. Followed by Priest, I think Evoker is the next best, largely because of their all of their movement cooldowns. And like, <clears throat> not only that, but like they're necessary to help some of the specs like Priest, for example, to actually live some of the encounters. Followed by Evoker, I think Holy Paladin and Shaman are kind of in the same tier. Uh, both give quite a bit of utility. Some of it's a little bit more niche or like not always useful, like uh, Ancestral Protection Totem, for example. But whenever it is good, then it's like invaluable. And then following them, I think Druid and Mistweaver, the specs can give you good utility, but I don't really see it being showcased all that much in this next raid. Um, and a lot of the stuff that they bring are also brought by other uh, like Druid specs or like Brewmaster or Windwalker, for example. So I think they're the the losers in the utility department. So that's the pretty much all my thoughts on the healers ranked in those four different categories. And if you're excited to play, you know, Mistweaver and Holy Priest as your main, uh, let me know. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe and like the video for more. See ya.